This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. At least 42 supporters of ousted Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi were shot dead, and hundreds were wounded earlier today at a sit-in outside the military barracks, where Mohamed Morsi is reportedly being held. The Egyptian military said they opened fire after members of the Muslim Brotherhood tried to storm the Republican Guard. Survivors of the attack said the army began shooting while they were praying and staging a peaceful sit-in. I was outside the barracks, near the entrance, and I saw people coming at me, so I looked over my shoulder so that I could run. But when I faced back to the front, a tear gas canister hit me in the face. Blood was coming out of my face, so I lay on my back. Then a soldier attacked me and hit me with the butt of his rifle on my leg and said, we have to cleanse the square of all of you today. Today's shooting comes five days after the Egyptian army ousted President Mohamed Morsi and suspended the constitution following days of mass protests led by the youth group Tamarud. Adli Mansour, the head of Egypt's Supreme Constitutional Court, was sworn in as interim president Thursday. In one of his first moves, Mansour dissolved the upper house of parliament. He's expected to serve until new elections are held. The military's move to oust Morsi was welcomed by protesters in Tahrir Square, who described Morsi's ouster as a continuation of the revolution that took down Hosni Mubarak. But members of the Muslim Brotherhood have vowed to resist what they see as a military coup and crackdown on members of the Brotherhood. Morsi and other top members of the Brotherhood have been detained since Wednesday. Travel bans have been placed on many other Brotherhood leaders. The military also shut down the Muslim Brotherhood's newspaper and four television stations, including station run by Al Jazeera. We go now to Cairo, where we're joined by Democracy Now! correspondent Sharif Abdokadus. His most recent piece in the nation is called What? led to Morsi's fall and what comes next. You can hear his podcast, Reports of Events Unfolding, at democracynow.org. Sharif, talk about the latest news out of Egypt. We haven't spoken to you in a number of days since Morsi was forced out. Well, Amy, I'm just uh, coming back from the scene of a bloodbath in Cairo today. As you mentioned, the official count is at least 42 people killed, uh, 300 wounded, um, many of them uh, killed with live ammunition. I spoke to uh, many eyewitnesses. All of them say that the attack began uh, right, uh, right at the end of um, dawn prayer, where uh, pro-Morsi uh, supporters are holding a sit-in. Uh, one in uh, Nasr City, uh, in uh, close to Rabah Dueda Mosque. But this attack happened in a kind of a splinter sit-in that is near the headquarters of the Republican Guard, where many uh, Morsi supporters believe that the uh, ousted president himself is being held. Uh, the attack began, as I said, uh, at dawn this morning. Many eyewitnesses said it began with tear gas. They said it was unprovoked. And following the tear gas, it was uh, live ammunition and shotguns. I spoke to many doctors at field hospitals who say many of the injuries are uh, head and chest wounds, which indicates that uh, soldiers were uh, really uh, shooting to kill. The military has said that two of its uh, soldiers uh, have, have been killed, a dozens wounded, six critically. Uh, the, the military, uh, or state TV, has been saying that uh, what provoked the attack was um, protesters trying to storm the headquarters of the Republican Guard. Uh, both sides have these uh, competing narratives right now. Uh, but. Um, uh, and it also says that it has detained uh, 200 uh, protesters who they say are armed. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see what, what the real nature of events was, but I think we have to remember that this is the same military that uh, killed 27 unarmed protesters uh, just on the street behind me uh, near Maspiro uh, in October 9th, 2011, and also denied uh, wrongdoing or denied involvement whatsoever, despite uh, very clear video evidence to the contrary. It's the same uh, military that has tortured protesters, uh, conducted uh, virginity tests on uh, women, has uh, conducted a very vicious crackdown on Abbasaya uh, in 2012. So, uh, w you know, I, I think we have to put this all in context of what's happening. But this has really um, stained the political uh, atmosphere 
more than it already has been and polarized both sides. The Noor Party, which is the uh, ultra-conservative Salafi party and was the only Islamist group really participating in this new army-led transition, has uh, sus suspended uh, talks uh, with the interim president to name a new prime minister. The uh, interim president himself, Adli Mansour, who, as you mentioned, is the head of was the head of the Supreme Constitutional Court, uh, announced uh, just a few minutes ago he's forming a committee to investigate uh, today's events. The Muslim Brotherhood uh, has released a statement calling for an uprising, uh, an intifada, in response to what happened today. And uh, this comes on the heels of uh, a number of days of violence that followed uh, the, uh, the ouster of Mohamed Morsi on July 3rd. We saw at least 40 people have been killed uh, in, in those days before today, uh, more than 1,000 injured. Um, four of those killed were also at the Republican Guard, Morsi supporters, when uh, troops opened fire, when some Morsi supporters got uh, too close. But uh, the Morsi supporters have also marched uh, on Friday to different parts of Cairo, parts, uh, areas where anti-Morsi supporters, especially near Tahrir Square, uh, are very heavily uh, based. And this led to clashes, and um, a lot of anti-Morsi uh, um, anti protesters were killed uh, in the neighborhood of Menyal, in the middle-class district. Uh, there was a very angry funeral the other day uh, after four, uh, four men from the neighborhood were killed there when Morsi supporters marched through there. Uh, they were killed with all with live ammunition. So really, this is uh, an escalating situation, and one is, that is descending into uh, a spiral of violence and retribution. Yesterday, we saw these uh, massive rallies, uh, both in Tahrir Square and at the Presidential Palace, who uh, were supporting the ouster of uh, Mohammed Morsi, but also at Rabah Adawaya in Nasr City neighborhood, uh, supporting the, the ousted president. So uh, the coming days will be very tough. But it was a very um, a bloody, bloody day, uh, bloody morning uh, in Cairo today. Uh, we got word this weekend that Mohammed al Baradai was named as the uh, new prime minister or the interim prime minister. Um, but then, uh, with al Noor's opposition, uh, that was changed. Can you talk about uh, the significance of what's happening at the, in the leadership? Right. Uh, so, as we know, the interim president is Adli Mansour, and we're waiting to see who will be tapped to be the new interim prime minister, which will be a very important job uh, dealing with the day-to-day -day governance of the country in the interim period. The uh, state uh, news agency reported that uh, Mohammed al-Baradai had been tapped to be prime minister. Everyone was writing their stories about it and headlines. And then a few hours later, the presidential spokesperson denied those claims. And it appears that the Noor Party, again, the ultra-conservative Salafi Party, which is a part of this process, uh, said it would withdraw uh, from uh, the process if Baradai was named prime minister, essentially issuing, you know, a, a veto uh, over the process. So uh, there's been rumors floated last night that he could be named some kind of vice president. And there was rumors that a um, uh, someone called Ziad Bahaeddin, a social democrat, would be named prime minister. But I think these are leaks for uh, coming from above to kind of test the waters to see what would be acceptable. Baradai's name is still on the table. It has not been withdrawn. Groups like Tamarud, which is the uh, campaign that first called for the June 30th protests and collected millions of uh, signed petitions against Mohammed Morsi, has said it would uh, stand behind the, the, the choice of Baradai and would uh, not accept any other person. So we'll have to see how these political developments go forward. The the uh, interim president and the national and the Barada and other opposition leaders have called on the Muslim Brotherhood to participate in this process, to be a part of this uh, transition going forward. The Muslim Brotherhood has firmly rejected those invitations. It has uh, uh, said that the reinstatement of Mohammed Morsi as president would be a precondition for talks. It has continued uh, its sit-in and uh, protests uh, in different parts of the country. So it's a very polarized situation. It will be a, a very difficult situation, uh, especially after today, given uh, that dozens of people were killed, uh, you know, on the streets of Cairo. Responded to the killings this morning, uh, or to um, as well the arrest warrants for Muslim Brotherhood leadership. 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning As of the question. As Tamarad responded um, to, uh, to the killings this morning uh, and in the last days, as well as the arrest warrants for the Muslim Brotherhood leadership. Uh, well, I was. Uh, well, I haven't seen a response today. I'm not sure they may have released a statement. Mohammed Al Baradai released a statement condemning violence uh, and calling for an investigation. So uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. I mean, um, there's been a lot of uh, support for the military by this, uh, by many people who were taken to the streets to protest against Mohammed Morsi. Uh, you know, there's this kind of uh, flirtation going on between the army and, and protesters with helicopters flying low overhead and people cheering wildly as they did, and the army dropping flags on protesters, and repeatedly day after day, jets, uh, uh, army jets flying in the sky, painting the uh, Egyptian flag in colors, and once even drawing a heart over Tahrir. So uh, the army has really uh, sought to recapture its brand as, you know, the custodian of, uh, of order in Egypt. I think it's important to remember that there are uh, still significant portions, or, or uh, what we call kind of the heart of uh, the revolution, the core activists who rose up against the military during uh, when they led the transition following the ouster of Hosni Mubarak, and uh, they continue to be very critical of, uh, of the military. Again, uh, as I enumerated before, the, the military's abuse and torture of protesters and killing of protesters in the interim period. I think I think we also have to remember why, uh, if we look at the context of why the military is getting involved, the military, of course, enjoys a vast economic empire in Egypt, uh, something up to 30 percent of the economy it controls. It relies on conscripted labor to produce everything from bottled water uh, to fertilizer to jeeps to pasta. And, um, you know, it needs political stability, though, to enjoy these core interests. And uh, while it did strike a deal, a political pact with the Muslim Brotherhood that granted it all of its uh, uh, autonomy in the Constitution, also allowed uh, generals a safe exit without holding them to account for the killing of protesters, uh, that pact uh, began to come apart as political instability threatened uh, a complete state collapse and threatened to uh, really rupture their core interests. And I think that's why the uh, head of the armed forces eventually did step in and, uh, you know, uh, facilitate this coup, which was a coup, but was facilitated on the back of a popular uprising. Uh, and we witnessed, you know, the biggest protests in Egypt's history on June 30th against Mohamed Morsi. Sharif, I want to ask you to stay with us. We're going to have a, a wide-ranging discussion about what's happening today in our next segment. Sharif Abdel-Kadus, Democracy Now! correspondent, writes for The Nation magazine, and we'll link to his piece called What Led to Morsi's Fall and What Comes Next. This is Democracy Now! Back on Egypt in a minute.